to the podcast, how does it feel to be a classical female musician? Where we speak about the challenges of being a woman in classical music business and general gender equality in this industry. This podcast is a series of interviews with prominent female musicians. You can find out more about the project in the first video. I'm very honored to introduce you my next co-speaker, Clara Andrada de la Calle, solo flutist of Higher Symphony Orchestra Frankfurt. Hello, Clara. Hi, the pleasure is mine. You became the solo flutist of Higher Symphony Orchestra Frankfurt at the early age of 23. How was the entrance to the professional world for you as a young, successful and attractive woman? Did you feel any unpleasantness from older colleagues, both male and female, or maybe even conductors? Well, I am very happy to say that my experience has been quite positive. Um, Frankfurt Radio Symphony Orchestra is a super friendly orchestra. And everybody was, I felt the support and the curiosity, of course, but um, it was kind of, I felt completely taken care of as well. So it was, it was a really good experience. My opinion is, of course, especially with a little bit elderly colleagues, you could at the beginning see they didn't know where to position you, how to treat you. It's always these big gaps in ages. I don't know if that has to do with gender or not, but of course, yeah, uh, um, I think it's very important that from the beginning uh, one is oneself and one is polite and respectful and then my experience was when I was like that I got the same back. So um, to make yourself respected, you know, like, um, I don't know, one is young but one has won an audition, it's a great position and then somehow I think um, this belief that we are all the same in the orchestra, for me, is all the same. It's not even principles and tutis and whatever. But um, to be able to also look directly in the eyes and, and not feel like uh, I'm new, I'm young, I don't have any experience like I didn't have. Uh, but, you know, to really go for it as an equal. So actually to have a good attitude about yourself, being sure about what you do. And I would also say, if you respect yourself as a musician and you show that kind of out, then it's easier to get it back. Yes, yes. Of course, I was completely clear that I didn't have enough experience yet. So it's not that I was they're showing everybody how <laughs> but but you know to dare to everybody has a voice yeah so to dare to use your voice and you're also um you play a lot also in other orchestras were there the same experience or maybe you felt some we don't want to ask you where we just want to see if you had um, similar experience everywhere or maybe you find yourself in some orchestras with different experience or not so much welcomed and opened and uh, everything you said? Um, not all the orchestras are the same, let's put it that way. Okay. I mean, uh, I'm lucky to play in both Frankfurt Radio and Chamber Orchestra of Europe, and both of them uh, is a dream, is a dream to be part of them. Um, but as a guest, I did play, especially at the beginning, in a few others, in Germany, in England, and a bit in Spain, and um, yeah, uh, I never had big problems, but sometimes you needed really to get bigger and occupy a little bit more of a space if they were trying to play well a bit. But but really, it's just like I'm happy to say that for me the situations where they kind of understood very easily. Okay. So we come back actually to the attitude. It's always good to have a good attitude and not be too shy, especially with maybe solo positions is even more, I would say, than in Tutti. But I think it's a good, um, it's a good thing that we remember that we always need to have our attitude and not trying to, 
to cover. Especially somewhere. when we win an audition like that. And I suppose maybe there is, I don't know, like I say we are all equal and I see everybody equal, especially in the wins, we are all important. Everybody yeah, has, a, sure. has a voice. Um, I don't know if there is differences or it will be different with a two team. Maybe that's better to <laughs> talk to a string player about it. But um, I really think, you know, if you have won an audition, you have won the position, then everybody's also looking forward to hear what you have to say sure. in the music and as a person. And they actually decide to have you there, so I will just check if we really record. <laughs> so you are one of the leading flute players in the world, with heavenly sound and amazing feeling for phrasing. A lot of people don't know you just because of your wonderful playing. They know you also as the solo flute with perfect hairstyle. That's what I heard in my country. <laughs> from, um, from recording with higher symphony orchestra Frankfurt. I, knew, I know you as someone who is always well dressed and cares about the hairstyle and makeup. Did you ever have problems in your career because of the appearance? Have you ever privileged or disadvantaged based on your looks? Um, for luckily, no. Uh, I think it's a little bit of a cultural thing, if I might say. I suppose, I don't know, in Spain, when one walks on the street, oh, many Spanish people like, it's kind of, they have fun taking care a little bit about their appearance. Uh, so it's not that I'm doing an extra effort. I think a nice appearance is always very welcome or it can uh, maybe create uh, um, that people feel interested or I don't know, but I don't, I never think about my appearance. It's kind yeah. of, it it's was a natural thing. It was more, um, the taking care about ourselves um, mm -hmm. and I like to do that and I of course I will uh, lie if I say I <laughs> do not try to <laughs> look uh, nice but but it's not I don't think it's the most important thing that's for sure um, it's a bonus I think that's <laughs> always that's always also like for example before the concerts it's kind of a ritual like getting ready for the concert is getting ready also you know, like then, then you feel ready. Like I, um, we can discuss, and many people will have other opinions. But for me, it's kind of the ritual of getting prepared for it. For me also, and for example, I think uh, cellists are always the one who likes to have big and nice dresses, and um, I found that as a challenge. For example, when I have duo with accordionist, because. Um, of course, they also want to dress well and everything, but they are not used of big dresses and everything. But what I got after the concert, people always realize the dresses and they are always, oh, but you had such a nice dress. And I would honestly say that I think it's a, it's a bon bonus at the end because when people come to the concert, of course, the first thing is to, to listen to music, but most of them aren't professionals and they also look at us. That's why we play on the stage and not behind the curtain or something. So I would say it's anyway a bonus, but it's really nice that you didn't have any bad experiences about it because what I heard from some other young uh, musicians that um, sometimes they actually needed to to think a lot about what they are dressing to rehearsals because they don't want to have too much colors or something like that so everybody won't look at them or something like that it's it's uh, like you said it's an observation thing i mean you have to know who you are and how do you want to show to the world like i would say trust yourself and how you are of course, observe what is around you because I mean, I remember now that you say it's already a few <laughs> years ago, but I remember at the beginning I did look a little bit like 
I think um, only because he's in my ID card from the radio, uh -huh. I came on a red suit. <laughs> um, kind of curled, so I mean, not 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 like a suit, but but you know, it was red, uh -huh. and uh, I yeah, I remember it was a small program, it was a baroque program, but I remember some people looking like whoa. <laughs> um, so then I didn't wanted to have that all the time. I wanted to not have changed my style because it's who I am in all senses, plain and being. Um, but uh, of course, then you decide uh, what. You, how do you want to express yourself? It's I, another way of expressing. I think that's a good message to young girls because, um, for example, nobody prepares us to do things when we enter into the musical world. And if you are a solist, for example, then we all know you can do whatever you want and you can dress however you want. If you play good, nobody cares about it. Um, but in the orchestra, there is kind of more rules which are not written. We don't know about them. And I think so. it can be a problematic thing for girls when they come and they maybe feel a bit afraid. But I think it's a good um, message that we still should stay with what we feel to wear, to how to present ourselves, of course, if we all need to have a, a sh like a longer slaves, then you can't come with a dress without anything, that's for sure. But still for the rehearsals, I think we can encourage young girls to dress properly, of course, nothing improper, but still, if you like colors, it's okay to have colors. And if you like patterns, it's also okay to have patterns. Because nobody judges someone because he wears black, for example. So I think... A good advice in general is to make an effort to get to know the females of the orchestra, especially as a young player, um, in a way without like really feeling very welcomed by everybody. It's true that maybe um, men come more easily or maybe on the winds uh, they were more men um, and in the strings more, more women but somehow to show an interest because of course um, uh, we I don't know all the women look to the other women too and and it's a good thing to show that hey um, I would like to be your friend and, and then ask things like this, in case there are rules that are not written anywhere, because, uh, for example, uh, for us, it changed some years ago. At the beginning, we could wear everything in the concerts, but then they decided. And we try to keep it also like whenever um, a guest player is coming to be able to tell her. But sometimes if there is not a female that is playing on the section that time, yeah. it can be forgotten. So it's always a good thing to, you know, be able to have somebody, another female close friend in the orchestra. That's a good point. So have you ever personally experienced gender inequality during your career? In, so for example, in competitions or concerts or for a job employment? I mean, we know that in flute world there is mostly female, so I would say it's a bit different. Mm -hmm. um, but still there is a lot of young uh, male flutists and also older, not just young. Um, but for sure you, you were there for a lot of competitions and everything. So did you ever felt there something? Because, for example, I, re I, mean, I never thought about gender inequality before, before this scholarship. Because where I'm coming from Slovenia and I was studying a lot in Croatia and we realized that mostly uh, male persons have uh, important positions in the orchestra where we come from and also most of male persons have uh, good jobs in the, in the higher education um, system and we always thought it's just because they are better. But then with this scholarship, I was starting to think about it and it's just kind of impossible that they all are better. 
Um, so I think it's very important that we speak about this theme. I'm very happy that you didn't have a lot of bad experiences, but maybe you heard about some stories or you saw something which didn't touch you per directly, but you still were there to observe it. Um, we are living in times where this is becoming such an important tema. I think we have to thank all the generations before who did suffer and um, experience things that we wish they wouldn't have had to experience. Um, but now the good thing is that um, because of the society, of the Me Too movement or many other things, there are certain commentaries and there are certain attitudes that are not anymore allowed. Some older generations may still have it because they grew up with it, but now we don't have to take it anymore. I go back to the respect and to the acceptance from the beginning. Like, um, I think in a way, I always felt equal. I never really had to think about the gender. And it's true that after maybe almost 10 years leaving the orchestra, somebody came to me and said, uh, but are you aware that you're the only solo position with the harp player? But somehow the harp player, I don't know, they didn't count it as much because also... Yeah, it's also... Nice. Which is changing also a lot, which I find also very interesting. But uh, now we have also a wonderful viola, solo viola yeah. player. And, um, but I never even consider it. So that's the best sign and that's whatever I would wish everybody to experience. Um, but um, I think it's now with a lot of respect, we can also speak up. I don't think we need to take any more of these comments and any more of those. You can, in a good moment and in a good tone, try to explain to the other person how do you feel when you hear that or to say I don't think this is appropriate or it depends of the person a lot but um, in the middle of the rehearsal I will find it very difficult because one is in the music there's so many things to think that to have to stop and say like hey this is not <laughs> but then I for me it's very important uh, to then find a moment or but not not leave it unspoken okay because i'm in a way i want to think we also have a responsibility still hopefully your generation wouldn't have to deal with this anymore but obviously we need to because i'm doing this so and i would say it's still there i know I, and it depends of course on the country on the, and the, on the education in the families yeah. that's that's the main thing i think uh, I come from a family where my mom uh, had a fantastic job, uh, had a lot of responsibility. We grew up with this, my father was working too, uh, but always kind of supported. We, we kind of, uh, for us, it was never, and, and that's what I saw. That's why I think I imagine, at the beginning, I imagine that everybody will be the same, and then you realize that not. <laughs> uh, so even though I didn't have personally very bad experiences, but you see or comments or um, attitudes that uh, are not uh, possible anymore. Like, the good thing is that right now, before, it could be more, we could argue more about it, but now it's clear that this is not accepted. And then, you know, like, even I have almost all my friends are quite uh, doing their efforts to be as, you know, normal and equal. And, and, and sometimes it's true, there can be some comments and so But So to just show them that because of the history or because of the, not that we are exaggerated or making it too big, it's just um, if we feel something and it, could be for men or for women. I think you can you can really speak about it and, and with a lot of respect um, create the space and the atmosphere you want to have around. Actually, after listening to you, I think there is actually this experience you had in your family was very important for you because I'm sure if you wouldn't have this in your in 
your inner uh, body that everybody should be equal that maybe also people would feel that and feel more possibilities to to show maybe some not so nice uh, sides but since you are very strong independent woman and showing that you you know you are equal like other people i think it also helps and maybe maybe girls and women in general are sometimes still afraid to show what they are because all the history we had and for example um, baden württemberg is giving this uh, frauen stipendium because um on the on the hochschulen is still mostly male professors and kind of little percent of um, female so that's why they want to support more because actually more than 50 percent of students are female and then it changed but I'm really happy that in orchestra is changing so much because we can remember that not so long ago uh, Vienna Philharmonics didn't have women that some extremely big names conductors we won't say who 30 years ago or 20 years ago they still said that women should be at home in the kitchen and not playing in the orchestra so I'm really, really glad that um, it's changing so much and that we have an opportunity to play in the orchestra, which really feels like kind of family and where everybody tries to do their best to be friendly. Um, you are not only an outstanding solist, chamber and orchestra musician. Uh, you are also a professor at Conservatorio Superior de Aragón in Spain, true? Yeah. <laughs> After your studies in three different countries, how would you describe your experience in higher education institutions? As a, as a flute student, majority, like you said, um, are female uh, yeah. flutists. And as a uh, young student, I was already making myself this question. Mm -hmm. Why in the orchestras the principals are almost all men yeah we feed the schools they are all women so i remember thinking about that and i came i was still 18 and i came to my conclusions were that they overthink less <laughs> 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 so they just play Go without and play. you know like a, and uh, on our, on the wind uh, world uh, many of them they have a uh, even bigger lung capacity. Mm -hmm. So of course for holding the phrases and things like this, but these are all things that we can also train as a thing. Of course. So, so yeah, those were my uh, uh, my thoughts on that time when I was thinking, why is it happening this? <laughs> Actually now when you said about the cap cap lung capacity, yeah. Um, I remember I found out one research, I mean, let's be honest, nowadays you can find on Google every research possible with every result you want. But there was one research about um, female and male musicians. Um, and the conclusion was that male uh, musicians can play faster because their body is somehow helping them to have faster fingers. But that women should in general be more able to to put more emotions to the music and everything, which I at the end wouldn't agree so much. But it was interesting because a friend of mine uh, told me about this research and then she said, okay, now I practice super a lot and I will have faster fingers than male. And she did it. So I think we just need to believe to ourselves and really believe that everything is possible. And if we have a good attitude, if we are prepared well, and if we don't overthink, um, I think we can win all the positions and all the good jobs in the world. We just need to have an attitude because I think what also mostly helps to men is the attitude because they come, like we said, they come, they don't overthink and they play. And that's it. And we're like, I'm always like, oh, yeah, am I good enough? How blah, blah, blah. Like hundred things which are actually at the end not important because I'm just there 
to do what I can do and what I was prepared for. But would you maybe say that you felt um, like some really positive um, experiences about being a woman? So maybe some privileged, some maybe some more concerts um, or something like that. Um, I think we are now in a moment where we could be favorized just by the fact of being a woman in the moment right now because I suppose uh, it's in the political world it has been clear in all these top categories there are more men so now it's actually we could take it as an advantage I just keep talking about our differences is what makes us different that in a way if we want to be equal I think we should keep that conversation kind of not ignoring if other female needs more support or if uh, you know but but try to to just earn our positions you know yeah. like whatever you just said was very interesting I think we have to have our dreams quite clear yeah you know not only I mean dream is one of the best things and one of the motors uh to keep growing and developing, I think. Um, before I used to have some ideas or some feelings, but never went into detail. And I think um, maybe it helps. Not that I did it when I was young, so it's not that I got into here because I visualize it. No, <laughs> I think it's a good exercise now, but then I didn't know. I mean, um, but I think a good. Um, comment to all the young female uh, new generations is you know to really sit down and, and try to figure out what is what we really want try to make a plan without work we don't get anything you know without doing something for it it's not gonna just just come because we know <laughs> what we want uh, so prepare and always you know keep on your path it helps in all sorts of things in life not only about the work even um about personal relationships about uh, friendships about family about the um, um to always celebrate every little step of the process not only until we get a job uh, we cannot celebrate because we still don't have the security or the finances sorted out or something um but you know every realizing where do we want to go what do we need to do on the way and and celebrating each small step because that's what also i think we tend to focus all the time in everything what we would like to do better yeah which we have to be aware of, of what are the things that we want to get better but let's focus on our strengths on all the things that maybe make us more special like as a person, not even now as a female or as a male, but as a person, what makes you special? We, there are not two persons the same, even even when they are born together, the character can yeah. be different. And um, everybody has, I want to believe, a mission in this life. So let's try to be clear about what is our path and, and keep walking towards our dreams. That's that was really nice said and I would just maybe to add that we really need to be conscious about our about our pluses. I mean what makes us special and kind of maybe when we are sure about it it's easy easy more easy to show it to the world um but also be aware of where we need to develop and stay with it and as you said like appreciate small wins celebrate them because if we just wait for the big wins even when they will come we won't be satisfied i think so i think you we did a good points for for young generations and i hope someone will find something helpful in this podcast and thank you for being here. Thank you, Clara, for your time. I know you are a super busy woman 
and I'm really thankful for take time for this project and to maybe uh, open the eyes. Listen to this woman. She has lots of (laughs) things to to say. (laughs) Thank Thank you.